Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer here on this Thursday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. Uh, today we leave the Book of Kings that we've been in for the better part of two weeks now and uh, um, enter into um, Sirach, the Book of Sirach today. And But the characters are the same. We, we're reading about uh, Elijah and Elisha. And uh, again, in this book, uh, reinforcing what we saw in Kings, that Elijah was indeed uh, carried to heaven in a fiery chariot led by fiery horses, and that Elisha was gifted with the uh, uh, double dose of the Holy Spirit uh, in his ministry. And then we, we also read that both of them, Elisha and Elijah, were responsible through God's intervention, of course, God's, uh, you know, cooperating with the gifts they were given, uh, raised the dead and, and did all sorts of wondrous, miraculous things in their ministry in their lifetime. God can do so much when, like Jesus always says, your faith your faith has saved you. Your, you know, our faith, our our trust in Him, our belief in Him, that He can do wondrous deeds. We cooperate by our faith, and miracles do happen. It's just a terrific reality that our God, the God is powerful, all-powerful, all-loving, all-knowing, and with him all things are possible. So when we align ourselves with him, when we cooperate with him, we're, uh, we're in a good place. So trust in that. Live that way. And today in our gospel, Again, still Matthew, still chapter 6. This is the continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. And now Jesus is talking to us about how to pray. Not to babble on and on and on using a million words and big fancy flowery words trying to impress him. Uh, he's talking about some people who kind of like to, you know, they... They like to hear themselves pray. You know, their prayers, I think, are more directed to themselves, for themselves, than to God and for God. But Jesus teaches us that perfect prayer today. In Matthew's Gospel, we hear the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the prayer that we pray here at evening prayer every day, the prayer we pray at Holy Mass every day, the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, like we did when we were doing our 33-day uh, consecration, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, think about it. Let it sink in. What is it that you're praying? And just think about the beauty of that perfect prayer. The words of Jesus himself you know, and, and this love, loving God of ours that wants us to call him Daddy, Abba, our Father. So we're so blessed. We're so fortunate that we exist, that we are created in God's image and likeness, that we can turn to him as our Father. and say thank you, and say help us. So let's do both of those things right now, shall we? Let's enter into our evening prayer in a spirit of thanksgiving and also in a spirit of help me, help me, because we all, we all need help. Without God's help, we'd be so lost, so despondent, so let's be grateful that we do have him in our lives and let us turn to him now 
as our Father in heaven and earnestly pray our evening prayer, shall we? So we enter in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, God. Come to my assistance, Lord. Make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your holy people rejoice, O Lord, as they enter your dwelling place. O Lord, remember David and all the many hardships he endured, the oath he swore to the Lord, his vow to the strong one of Jacob. I will not enter the house where I live, nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes, to my eyelids I will give no slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. At Ephrathah we heard of the ark, we found it in the plains of Urim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling, let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you in the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness, your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your holy people rejoice, O Lord, as they enter your dwelling place. The Lord has chosen Zion as his sanctuary. The Lord swore an oath to David. He will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If they keep my covenant in truth and my laws that I have taught them, their sons also shall rule on your throne from age to age. From the Lord, for the Lord has chosen Zion as his desired, he has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. There have I chosen to live. I will greatly bless her produce. I will find, I will fill her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation on her faithful and her faithful shall ring out their joy. There David's stock will flower. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. I will cover his enemies with shame. But on him my crown shall shine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you chose to suffer and be overwhelmed by death in order to open the gates of death in triumph. Stay with us to help us on our pilgrimage. Free us from all evil by the power of your resurrection. In the company of your saints and constantly remembering your love for us, may we sing of your wonders in our Father's house. The Lord has chosen Zion as his sanctuary. The Father has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship. All people will obey him. We praise you, the Lord God Almighty, who is and who was. You have assumed your great power. You have begun your reign. The nations have raged in anger, but then came your day of wrath, the moment to judge the dead, the time to reward your servants, the prophets, and the holy ones who revere you, the great, and the small alike. Now have salvation and power come, the reign of our God and the authority of his anointed one. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who night and day accused them before God. They defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death, so rejoice you heavens and you that dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Father has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship. All people will obey him. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. All of you should be like-minded, 
sympathetic, loving toward one another, kindly disposed, and humble. Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult. Return a blessing instead. This you have been called to do, that you may receive a blessing as your inheritance. The Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. The Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. Honey from the rock to our heart's content, bread of the finest wheat. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. Let us call upon Christ, the Good Shepherd, who comes to the aid of his people. Hear us, O God, our refuge. Blessed are you, Lord. You, for, you, for you graciously called us into your holy church. Keep us within the church until death. Hear us, O God, our refuge. You have given the care of all the churches to Francis, our Pope. Give him an unfailing faith, lively hope, and loving concern. Hear us, O God, our refuge. Grant the grace of conversion to all sinners and the grace of true repentance to all men. Hear us, O God, our refuge. You were willing to live as a stranger in our world. Be mindful of those who are separated from family and homeland. Hear us, O God, our refuge. To all the departed who have hoped in you, grant eternal peace. Hear us, O God, our refuge. Let us conclude our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, we thank you for guiding us through the course of this day's work. In your compassion, forgive the sins we have committed through human weakness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone. And uh, tomorrow's Friday. We have another weekend in front of us. So enjoy. Be safe, and uh, keep me in your prayers as I keep you in mind. God bless you all, and hopefully we will see you all tomorrow.